In this video, we're going to look at what I would do if I was brand new to Figma and learning everything from scratch. I'll talk you through five key areas I believe you should dive into. We'll talk around the fundamentals, the basics, the things you need to know. We'll also look at slightly more advanced features and what they do and how they'll be useful to you. We'll look at how you can improve your processes using Figma to speed things up and make sure that your output is top notch. And finally, we'll look at collaboration, how you can work with others, other designers in the platform, or even with uh, engineers and front-end people so you can hand your designs off and make sure that they're built exactly how you've designed them. So the first question I would ask to you is why do you want to use Figma? Is it because everyone else is using Figma and you think I need to get on this bandwagon so I won't get left behind? Or have you joined a company where Figma is their primary design tool and you need to get up to scratch fast? Have you been using it a while? Is there a specific tool or feature that you think you need to elevate your design skills to the next level? The foundational piece of learning anything is starting with the basics. Now Figma does a lot of everything and it does it really well, but it can have quite a steep learning curve. So you go from the simple functionality right up to the advanced functionality quite quickly. I would recommend, and this is how I learned it, to start with the basics. Where's everything laid out in the tool? Do you know where the select tool is? Do you know how to create a shape? Do you know how to resize a shape? Do you know how to copy and paste? Do you know how to duplicate? Do you know what a frame is or a group? Do you know the difference? Do you have a good concept of what a component is and how important that is when thinking about how to use Figma? All of these basics are key to being able to move into the advanced features of the tool. I really recommend jumping into the Figma Academy on their website. I'll put a link in the description. It covers all the basics and will get you up to speed really fast and give you a good foundational knowledge so you can start to take your Figma skills to the next level. The way I approached this learning task was thinking about why I wanted to use it. I wanted to bring my designs to life. So from concept on pen and paper maybe, right through to an interactive prototype that I could share with stakeholders. So I had that concept clear in my head and that led me on to discover the more advanced features and how powerful they can be. And some of the more advanced features that I'd recommend you start looking into are design systems. I've got a few videos on those already, so I'll link them up here for you to have a look at. So once you've got an idea of what a design system is and how that works, I'd start looking at things around master styles. So color palettes, typography, iconography, how you can use those in your design system to elevate your designs to the next level. Then you'd go a bit more advanced again, so you'd start thinking about master components and component variables, and then even into advanced variables. Figma's released some really cool functionality over the past few months, which allows you to take really complex designs using some logic in the prototyping section and trimming down the volume of design frames and auto layouts that you'll need. The next major thing I start to think about and start learning about is how you can use all the features in Figma and the knowledge you've built up to improve your processes. And by improve your processes, I mean, think about how any repetitive tasks can be automated within the platform. So for example, if you've got a card you want to use multiple times, how could you automate that using the design system and components? And then even more so, how would you create slight variations on that with variables within components. Mastering that really speeds up your process, makes uh, working with other designers super easy, super quick, and keeps consistency across everything. The final piece I wanna to touch on in the key areas that I think uh, you should look at is collaboration. So one of Figma's founding principles was around collaboration. So instead of being a siloed designer working on your own, you could in real time work with a host of other designers, hundreds if you wanted to. I wouldn't recommend that, that'd be chaos. For those of you that are still learning the tool, you are able to work with other people live within a document that you're working on. So you'll see their cursor, they can move and edit and create in the same document as you at the same time. You've probably seen this in many other collaborative tools from Google Docs to Word. Miro's another good example, which is very similar approach to what Figma's done, but spend some time learning that and you'll, you'll reap the benefits. Another brilliant feature that helps with collaboration that they've released recently is dev mode. So this is a little toggle at the top of the screen. You flick it on, it turns all of your components and all of your designs and layouts and all the complexity that you've put into your work into something that the engineers front-end developers can translate 
and build with real code. The design visuals guide the developers to see what you're exactly you're trying to create. The prototype shows them what happens when a button's clicked or a menu's clicked or something like that. And then the final piece is listing out all the code that will be needed to recreate your components, your designs, your layouts in a pixel perfect way so that that transition from design to final product is as seamless as possible. So that was a whistle stop tour around some of the five key areas I think you should be thinking about learning. This is how I approached it. There are other ways of doing it. In fact, if you've got a better way or some thoughts on this, please add it in the comments below. I think if you think of the learning process for Figma as sequential, you'd want to start with the foundations. So if we recap on how I would approach that, you start with the why. Why do you want to use this tool? How's that going to get you where you want to go in your design career? Once you've nailed that down, you can then target your learning. So I started with the basics. I learned how to create shapes, copy, duplicate, all the stuff we covered before, then moved into the more advanced functionality around design systems, components, uh, brand, all that stuff. Then I started to think about how I could use those tools to refine my process and the people in my team. Uh, we all work together to figure out how that process could be improved even more. And then the final one was around collaboration. So using the tool to its maximum to allow full collaboration with other designers, stakeholders, engineers, users, uh, customers, all the people that will in the end be using and interacting and contributing to your final project. If any of the subjects we went through today sound interesting and you'd like a deeper dive on any of them, give me a shout in the comments below and I will put something together. Cheers and see you next time.